started out in a small town in the southern tier of New York State, worked his butt off in the restaurant industry for 13 years, and now flapping his gums off in the podcast world. Please welcome your host, Chef Michael Palmer. Hi, happy Halloween everybody. This is the Halloween edition of the Culinary Post. Um, it's been an awesome week hanging out with y'all on the Facebook page, of course. Uh, I noticed a very uh, tremendous growth of fans liking our page, so thank you so much for liking our page. Listen up, my awesome wife Morgan, Chef Morgan, is going to be in and out today. However, she's not feeling too good. Uh, she's down with the flu, so y'all keep her in thoughts and prayers. Um, even though she's sitting right beside me, along with my awesome daughter, Chloe. Hi. Hi. That was good, Chloe. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> We're into trick or treat. Yes, tonight. Well, Thursday evening, we went trick or treating in our town, and, uh, you know, uh, the police departments, uh, the na- national police departments are the nation. Uh, really strongly advise all the parents to check the candy before uh, giving them uh, over to the kids for their own uh, chew and pleasure. What's that? Which you did. Yeah, which I did. I took the time to check uh, a bag halfway filled of delicious candy. Totally filled up. It was better than last year's uh, uh, chicken cooking. This is Chloe's uh, one and a half year uh, deal. So next year she's going to be another character. This year she was a flyer. Last year she was a flyer. Next year she's going to be probably Minnie Mouse. You never know uh, what she picks off the shelf. Um, it was just too cute. A few places we let her... Uh, reach her hand out and grab the candy from the party that's giving candy. Anyways, wishing... Huh? She says hi. Yeah, she was saying hi there, but even uh, to... There was a guy that looked like Freddy Krueger walking down the sidewalk, which is very spooky. And there was another guy that looked like Jason walked down the uh, freaking uh, uh, sidewalk. The only person that we didn't see was Michael Myers. Which would probably completely freak us out. Oh, Chucky also. We didn't see Chucky. Who else did we didn't see? Chucky, Michael Myers, Scream, the Scream character. Yeah, the Scream character, of course. And the other legends of the horror films. Um, switching gears now, we're sitting back on a Thursday. Thursday evening, drinking the coolest light and yeah, taking a break from eating candy. Yeah, animal crackers for Chloe. We try to uh, limit her sugar intake until she turns the proper age of three, but that's kind of hard to do when she says mine. She's over here reaching into the hamburger bag, which uh, frankly we got a uh, coaches earlier. Oh. Anyways, uh, switching gears. Um, let me just go ahead and start with the intro. Um, for today's show, having a problem thinking about a snack or an appetizer or even a lunch, this cheesy chicken and biscuit sandwich is a warm must-have treat. Oh boy, do I have a recipe idea for you? Hey, I do. And what is the popular drink in New York City since 1930s made with milk? Then we have an awesome hot topic, really two hot topics for this uh, for this episode. Then we have your restaurant news, food recalls. Then I have a question for you. Is a tomato a fruit or a vegetable? I will tell you that sometime during today's episode. Um... But first, Jello Dessert Mode Kit is now available at Amazon.com. These aren't just your normal mode kits. These kits 
is for the college football season. Now, Amazon has in stock the Texas A&M University, Ohio State University, University of Wisconsin, and uh, University of Texas, and a lot more. So check that out. That's Amazon.com. Search for Jello Dessert Mode Kit. Um, popping on down to the restaurant news. Um, tomorrow, well, technically today, since you're listening on the 31st, again, happy Halloween, everybody. Um, go have a, a blast. Um, getting your free candy out of the neighborhoods and uh, uh, just be safe out there. Uh, Chop Road on October the 31st at 5 p.m. until closing will host his popular burrito test at all locations. Customers in costumes will get three dollar burrito in bows, salads, tacos, kids' meals, and all the proceeds will benefit the Charcoal Covey Foundation. Del Frisco's Grill, uh, you might want to check them out. We never ate there before, uh, so I can't give a rating for them. Hit this bucket spot on Friday when all flatbreads will be available for $10 each. Now the regular price is regularly uh, Twelve dollars and fifty cents up to four fourteen fifty for all takeout orders. Now the fat red selection includes roasted tomato with fresh mar- uh, mozzarella and basil, pesto chicken with mozzarella, Roma tomatoes, Parmesan and blue cheese, and more. Please make sure you check out www. del F R I C I mean S C O S Grill. Let me do that again. www.delfric I mean let me do that again. www.delfricosgrille dot com. How about this, the Hard Rock Cafe, the famous Hard Rock Cafe in New York, in order to place all locations. Uh, check this out. November the 2nd, head to the Hard Rock for Does Your Child Look Like a Rock Star costume contest from 3 to 6 p.m. Children in costume or not will be, um, be able to eat free from the Hard Rock's new rock star menu with the purchase of a adult entree, make sure you visit for uh, visit the website hardrock.com for more information. Check this out: Krispy Kreme donuts. Wear a costume to Krispy Kreme on Halloween to get a free donut of any available variety, including Halloween themed donuts. No purchase necessary. This offer only lasts when sub- when there are supplies to give. One donut per customer. Connect with Krispy Kreme at KrispyKreme.com. Uh, red pepper tequila on November the 1st. Celebrate the de- uh, Day of the Dead, both of Barcliff and Buckhead locations. With live music, traditional uh, decorations, specialty cocktail. Hey, three bucks. Harpon UFO. Pumpkin uh, giraffes and more. All ages can get a complimentary face painting uh, from five to uh, five to seven in the p.m. and on Barcliff, seven thirty until nine thirty p.m. Um, kids are also invited to create their own mask. Red Pepper is located in the tour at two. 149 Barcliff Road, Northeast and Bookhead at 3135 Sedmuk Road. Make sure you visit their website at eatredpepper.com. Rose Mexican Grill, October the 31st through November the 2nd. Get a free uh, kids combo meal when you buy a adult entry. Children must be 12 or under and wearing a costume to qualify. 
you get one kid's combo with fountain drink per adult entree purchase. Uh, go to lilies.com for more information. Georgia Aquarium, enjoy trick or treating from 2 to 7 p.m. on Halloween. And on Saturdays, 11 a.m. until 2 p.m., kids 12 and under in costume will get a free with a pan adult or a pass holder. Visit georgiaaquarium.org for more information. Uh, winter reading beginning at 6 p.m. on August 31st. All guests in costume or with kids will receive a 20% off on all purchases that even. Um, winter reading is located on the corner of 1004 North Highland Avenue. Uh, for more information, you can call them at 404 or go on their Facebook, facebook.com, under W-R-E-N-A-T-L. Um, check this out, the Grand Hyatt Atlanta, get a room, check out the, check them out, you get 20% off special for the holiday weekend. Um, the downtown is offering the range for $99 right now. Um, Olive Garden kids, of course, get uh, a meal, a free meal, with the purchase of an adult uh, entree on Halloween. Go to olivegarden.com, get a coupon, make sure you present it, uh, and uh, enjoy a dinner before trick-or-treating. Go to olivegarden.com for more information. Um, check this out. Quiznos continues to expand its industry-leading international de uh, development with Growth into seven countries in Asia and the Middle East. This is the latest addition to international development strategy to open more than 1,000 restaurants and more than 40 countries by 2020, and will widen the country food, uh, footprint abroad, top to help uh, trusted international master franchises. Some of the countries that they're looking at right now is Malaysia, China, Indonesia, Taiwan, and the United Arab. Um, also, we have news that McDonald's is changing their uh, campaign. Let me tell you what's going on. Um, since there's all kind of buzz on the Internet and Twitter about this, I decided to cover this story. Love and Beach Hayden will be launched next year by McDonald's and is a campaign aim, aimed to spread happiness in the face of the Internet hate. According to the Wall Street Journal, the rollout will include the spot during the Super Bowl uh, coming up on February the 1st. Um, everybody heard about the Fireball Whiskey? I got this story, of course. Fireball whiskey is being pulled from shelves in Europe because it contains too much, you know, additive. I don't know why. Tell you what, the United States don't care. We still drink it on down. Yum, yum. Um, this week, remember, Dunkin' Donuts brings a croissant donut hybrid to the masses for only 2 bucks and 49 cents. The croissant uh, donut will be made in a limited quantities and served daily for a limited time only. For more information, check out Dunkin' Donuts on the web. Um, but remember, you can get in a gift box with a clear window, or you can buy a dozen. We'll just put them in a donut box for you. Uh, food recalls. Uh, my wife was telling me something. Now, what, what what you were asking me during the news segment? Something about candy or something. Oh, I asked if, if you expected that one, if she wanted that one. Oh, yeah, I did. She just threw it. During unhappiness. Go ahead and give that one to her. Let's see. Let's put those up. It's supposed to be like the, the long stick. 
when it's short like that, like they broke it off, that's when you get suspicious. That's why we want to take it to the police lab or the hospital lab and have them check out for poison. See, same with this one, it's the same height, only they left this one, like, you said a half open. Yeah, we found a couple of candy that's weird when we're going to get it checked by doctors, make sure it's safe. Because it's supposed to be a long stem. Like these two are supposed to be like a long stem. That's what I found it suspicious because you can tell they broke it off. Yep. Make sure you check your candy, uh, ladies and gentlemen, before you hand them over to the kids. So, yeah, that one's okay to give to Chloe right now. Or give this one to Chloe because she was throwing that one around. That's the bubblegum one. Yeah, that was okay. Okay, I had to take a drink break too. Right, babe? Right. We'll be drinking again? Where's my beer? Yeah, this, uh, this segment is sponsored by no one except our Cooler Light Beer. Fresh and cold. Okay. Alright, let's go ahead and get down to the business to the food recalls. Whole Foods marketing is now recalling some ginger snap cookies produced and sold only in Massachusetts location due to Raylon error that has resulted in a undeclared tree nut, milk, soy, and egg allergens. The product has a sell by date of October the 28th of 2014. Uh, Key Tech, New York, uh, of Edison, New Jersey is now recalling its 5,560 packages of 7 ounce, 3840 packages of 14 ounce, and 1920 packages of uh, 28 ounce deep raw cashew pieces because of the potential of, uh, uh, contaminant of salmonella. I um, remember that. That's pretty deadly. Z Natural Foods of uh, West Palm Beach, Florida is now recalling 55 pounds of lightly roasted organic uh, raw powder because of the potential of contamination of Seminola. Um, Lundberg Family Farms announced its voluntary recalling uh, from distribution in the United States and Canada. Uh, bags of the sea salt rice chips due to possibility presence of undeclared diary uh, origin. The issue was discovered by a co consumer complaint. This was the San Car uh, Carton Foods in New Brunswick, Texas. It's now recalling possibly 25,000 pounds of fresh food and products that was just produced with a pre cook rice that may experience some temperature abuse. Return it to the store. Um, let's go down to the first hot topic of the day. The study shows that the juice from this tropical fruit called a pineapple, back to the pineapple subject since we're still talking about pineapple it looks like, um, has an effect in release cough. Eliminates mucus and also even relieves symptoms in patients diagnosed with tuberculosis or TB. The results of medical case show that pineapple extract is five times more effective in reducing the mucus compared to the syrup sold in pharmacies and patients recovered the most probably five times faster. Another case showed that pineapple juice, honey, chili pepper, salt combination stimulate the elimination of the mucus from the lungs in patients diagnosed with TB. And it's been proven that the pineapple relieves um, every type of cough, even dry cough. So go drink some pineapple. I got a recipe for y'all. Um, since pineapple is pretty much loaded now with vitamins, you need it, um, including if you have arthritis or something. Scientist has confirmed that the pineapple not only relieves cough, 
but also re uh, release symptoms of arthritis, regulate the blood pressure, and have certain anti-cancer properties. I have a recipe for the pineapple cough recipe, uh, thanks to the author of True Channel, um, C A N O L E. He's an author. Check him out. Um, here's the pineapple cough recipe. Ingredients is one cup of fresh pineapple juice, one fourth cup of fresh lemon juice, uh, one piece of ginger, about maybe three inches give and take, a half, I mean, really one tablespoon of raw uh, uh, honey, a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Here's the uh, instructions. Um, combine all the ingredients, take one-fourth of a cup, two or three times a day, and repeat recipe daily until your cough is gone. All right. Plain, plain Jane, I know it's flu season, coming down into it. There's your cough recipe uh, for this season. You need that recipe? It's on Facebook, and uh, I pretty much posted it there a couple of days ago. Now check this out. Here's that recipe I was talking about earlier in the intro. Chicken and biscuit pockets. Very easy to do. Um, plain and simple ingredients. One six ounce package of five uh, refrigerated buttermilk biscuits, or you can make your own biscuits by scratch. Um, a half a cup of finely chopped cooked chicken, one third cup of coarsely shredded yellow summer squash, one fourth of a cup of shredded Montgomery Jack or cheddar cheese of your choice, um, a half a cup of mayo, one tablespoon of honey mustard and a half a cup of bottled solid ranch. Preheat the oven to 400, separate the biscuits and flatten each um, with a palm of your hand, forming a three and um, a half inch circle. Make sure you divide the chicken squash and cheese evenly among the dough circles placed and fill on one side of uh, each dough circle. Fold the other sides of the dough circles over a fill-in, pinch edges, uh, pretty much seal them, arrange four biscuits on a ungreased baking pan, um, bake in a preheated oven about maybe 10 minutes or until golden brown. Do not burn them. Okay, whatever you do, don't burn them. Meanwhile, in a small bowl, mix together the mayo and the mustard. Make sure you serve mayonnaise mixture and the ranch dressing as a dip in the sauce for warm biscuits. Makes about maybe five servings give and take. All right. Um, let's take a break. Then I have the cooking term of the week about that popular uh, beverage. is in New York. Pretty much pretty good. It says the dessert. I'll tell you what's up with that. But first. Football season is now underway. Like I told one of my friends, that the Cowboys are six and two right now. For the first time in a long time, I want to congrat uh, congratulate the Dallas Cowboys uh, for at least trying to play. Um, also, the Saints is looking good, and some others, the Steelers. Um, it doesn't matter if the Houston Texans win or not; they're still our favorite team. Um, we, all, we will always support the Houston Texans, no matter what, if they lose or win, we will always still support the Houston Texans. But with all that said, it's been one heck of a kickball se uh, kick butt season, but with DraftKings, uh, draft there's no bye weeks, and you can get rid of your players if they don't play good football for you. Or if mean, your roster sucks, you can get a brand new one and win some top money. If you need $10,000 by this weekend, go to DraftKings.com and kick some uh, butt. Um, I know you can handle that extra cash. Again, go to DraftKings.com and uh, win that 10 k Alrighty. Uh, let's see. Cooking term of the week. 
egg cream, a beverage popular in New York since the 1930s, made with milk, chocolate syrup, and still stored water. However, there is no eggs in this beverage. The name comes from the frothy white top resembles in a beaten egg, uh, egg white. The recipe is a half a cup of whole milk, a little bit of specializer, and four tablespoons of chocolate syrup. In the preparation, pour the milk in, uh, into a very cold 12 ounce glass. Slowly pour in the specializer, then gently add the syrup. And with using a very long spoon, stir well and serve. Okay, here is another hot topic of the week. We're having fun on this episode. And uh, we're getting ready to head into the weekend and just have a fun. Um, family coming in this weekend. We're going to have maybe have some good pizza from Coach's Pizza in Waverly tomorrow night, with, well, technically on Friday, uh, yeah, Friday night. With all that said, yeah, with all, yeah, tonight, we're going to have some good Coach's Pizza. Check them out on Facebook, Coach's Pizza in Waverly. Uh, the best pizza in town. Not greasy like Pudgy's is, but it's pretty good. Here's a hot topic. I'm kind of um, biased about this, and I just don't know, but i kind of looking at the best for the company also, um, for any restaurant, matter of fact, that uh, there's a state senator is fighting to require restaurants in Florida to hang a grade you know, a grade card on their door or by the door uh, in the front of their establishment. Um, and mainly tell their guests that they're passing or a felon. If they're a felon, they can go somewhere else. If they're passing, that's good. I think it's a pretty good idea in a way because it'll probably tell you know, the team leaders of the restaurant or the employees that, hey, we made an A, keep on doing a good job, and keep on going with it. But if they're making a B or below, you'll probably tell the team leaders and employees, hey, the restaurant needs to be cleaned a little bit better, and especially the kitchen has to be clean and up to code and uh, quit serving, you know, outdated food or you know reheatable food you can only reheat the food only once don't keep on reheating it because you will eventually get somebody sick and the restaurant gets sued okay and your restaurant will be shut down by the city health inspector or the county health inspector whatever your case might be but really tell you the truth no matter how busy you are, if you're making top dollar, making uh, eight grand a day, you, you still got to keep your restaurant clean. Okay, I'm not sure I know you're busy, but still, keep it clean. Uh, personally, I've walked out of restaurants, even though the the host and your and the server was good, greeted me. Uh, you know, professionally and done their job, you know, with excellence. When you take, as a guest, as me as being a guest, even though I'm a chef, guests will take a look around the restaurant. They'll turn their heads left and right. They'll look up to the ceiling fans. They'll look at the floor. Your first expression is your final expression from a guest. That's it. It's only that first time. This, there ain't no second time, especially with me. You need you need to take care of your restaurant if you're going to have a restaurant. That's it. You got to keep it clean. That's it. No questions asked. I don't care if you're busy. I personally, walk, like I said, I walked out of restaurants. I don't care if it was busy or not. I walked out because the restaurant was dirty. 
I'd rather eat in a clean restaurant than a dirty restaurant. Say what? I said amen. <laughs> There's a Best Western here in our town, and um, I'm kind of disappointed how they ran their restaurant. And truth be told, and I used to work for that company, for that kitchen, they was keep on reheating food that they used the previous week. Come on, man. You can get people's fresh. Yeah, fresh food always. It doesn't, I don't care about your food count. I don't care how much it costs. I know it's your money. But every guest wants fresh food. They don't want reheatable food. That's it. You're there to make money. It's, it's a risk. But it's well, it's well worth it. Um, that's the bottom line. You're in the business. You better do it right or don't do it at all. Uh, no questions asked. Um, advertisement time. Um, then we're going to get down to another discussion. Um, we got our razors in the other day from the Dollar Shave Club. And it's pretty good razors. Um, it takes about three to five business days to get get the razors in your uh, get it on your front porch of your house. Um, that's DollarShave.com. dot com. Shave time, save money. It's well worth it. Um, if I was you, if you're a professional, if you're working in the kitchen, if you're a cop or whatever, go to Dollar Shave Club and. Where your uh, razor is better than standing in line for um, a long period of time on your busy schedule. Um, it's a month of supply. It's well worth it. Okay. Um, another commercial. Do you have a problem with your crew slipping those line in the kitchen? I know they have some company that can stop from that, all of that from happening. I mean, I know this company. I used this company since 1998. And they do one heck of a job. Shoes for Crews will provide your staff proper foot gear to protect them from slipping and hurting, hurting themselves in the kitchen. Um, that's Shoes for Crews. Well, here is something that I'm still debating on. I don't really care what the United States Supreme Court has to say. I was taught that tomato it was a fruit and still is considered a fruit. So is the tomato a fruit or a vegetable? I don't know. It's hard to tell, huh? Really? Let me tell you it's fruit, some think it's a vegetable. Well which is it? Let me tell you, it's a fruit, but however in the case of Nixon Hennon, the United States uh, Supreme Court ruled, ruled that all tomatoes are vegetables, despite the botanical fact that tomatoes are fruits. According to the uh, Oxford Dictionary, a fruit is defined as strictly the wrapping ovary of a plant and its contents. So technically it's a fruit. So, would we listen to the Supreme Court or just common sense? I don't know. Just a fruit. I don't know either. It's a fruit. Oh, which one do we listen to? We listen to common sense. Alright. We're old school, ain't we? Hell yeah. Heck yeah. Hey, that's our <laughs> one cuss word. That's good. <laughs> Family friendly, right? Yeah, her head is stuffy. Y'all keep her in mind. Keep her in prayer. Um, I don't care what the Supreme Court has to say on this issue. It's a fruit, in my opinion. That's the bottom line, because we said so. Hey, it's shaped like a fruit. Some people call it tomato and some people call it tomato. 
So who are we to judge? We say fruit. Yep, it's a pretty fruit. It's like fruity pebbles. Well, we're doing good on time today, aren't we? Look at that time clicker. 35 minutes into our show today. Wow, on our Halloween special. Well, that's it for our little show today. And uh, I don't know what else to get into, except we're going to go on and have a great day. Y'all have a happy Friday and a great weekend. Hope you join the our Facebook page. C A E C post or follow me on Twitter at Chef Mike P A L and uh let's just have a blast. That's the bottom line. Um also we're looking for Connor Post is looking for help. Go to ConnorPost info and put an application for anything that you want to work um work in. It's your choice. And uh, that's it for this show. This is Mike Palmer. I will see you probably next time, next week, same time, same channel. Um, remember, all downloads are free, and y'all have a great week. Um, send me some comments, suggestions on our Facebook or YouTube. See y'all later on The Connery Post.